Hi, this is question 5 from the AQA for the Pure 4 Jan 2013 exam paper. For the first part of this video I'd like you to try the question. So if you'd like to pause the video now and have a try. OK, I'm now going to give you a hint as to how you can go about answering the question. By direct expansion or otherwise we need to show that the value of this uh, determinant is independent of k so what we're looking to do is expand this out and because it's going to be independent of k we should end up with a situation where all the k's cancel each other out so we're just left with a particular value that this determinant has to take which means it doesn't matter what value of k goes into um, these elements of, of this particular determinant the value of the determinant won't change for part B, we need to um, give a reason why the vectors are linearly dependent or independent. We need to maybe see if we can link this to part A in some way. Um, similarly with part C, we're showing whether it's a cons consistent or inconsistent, so the system of equations. So if we can write this in matrix form, and again, if we can link it to part A in some way. And then the second part of part C, um, we need to see if we can decide um, what the um, geometrical configuration of the three planes are. So depending on what you get for part one, we need to decide whether they either um, intersect in a line, don't intersect at all, or if they intersect at a particular point. Um, and then we need to say and describe what that looks like. OK, if you'd like to pause the video and, and now have a go at the question. Okay, for the next part of the video, I'm going to go over the answer. So, I'm just going to create a little bit more room for myself. So, I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so I can um, work over here. So, for part A, um, we want to expand this out. Now, um, instead of just directly expanding this out, I'm going to use a couple of tricks to try and make it a little bit simpler because I've spotted that if I add this bottom row, to this top row I'm going to get a zero component over here and I've also spotted if I add um, double this row onto this row here then that's going to make that component there zero so um, the top component so the top row um, if I add this onto this, 2 plus negative 2 is 0, and I'm going to add um, k take away 1 to this one here, so that's going to just give me k, and over here I've got 1 and 2k, which is 2k plus 1. Now I'm not changing the middle row, so I'm just going to leave that as it is, so we've got a negative 1, 1, and k plus 1, and then the bottom row, I'm adding this middle row onto it. But I'm adding two lots of this middle row onto it. So that's going to be zero. And that's going to be so double that is two plus k take away one. So that's going to be k, oops, k plus one. And um, double that and add it onto that. So that's going to be 2k plus two plus one, which is 2k plus three. Okay, so um, the reason why I did that is now this can become a 2 by 2 determinant because I've got 0 times by um, the determinant of this part here, which is just 0. And then I've got to take away negative 1 times by the determinant of that and that, which is going to be, because I'm taking away negative, which is going to be 1 times or the determinant of k. 2k plus 1 and k plus 1 and 2k plus 3 and then I've got plus 0 times by the determinant of that part there which is just going to be 0 so it's simplified into a nice simple 2 by 2 determinant um, I can now expand that because I've got k times 2k plus 3 which is going to be 2k squared plus 3k and I'm going to take away, and I've 
we've got um, k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 ok so just to simplify that I've got 2k squared here plus 3k take away 2k squared take away k take away 2k so take away 3k and take away 1 um, and simplifying further 2k squared take away 2k squared is 0 3k take away 3k is 0 so I'm just left with negative 1 Okay, so um, so because I've just ended up with a with a value of negative one, it doesn't matter what the value of k is in this. The um, the determinant here is always going to be negative one. Um, so therefore, it's um, the determinant is a negative. Sorry, the determinant is independent of k, and it's important that we say that. So I'm now going to say therefore, um, determinant. Determinant is independent of K. And there you go. Right. So moving on to question B then. I'm just going to tidy this up a little bit. Okay, we need to show in part B that um well we need to decide whether these vectors are dependent linearly dependent or linearly independent of each other now what we might notice is that i've got a negative negative one two here and i've got the same here and then i've got one one and then i've got one over here so if k was two that would be one and also if k was two that would be four and that would be three so um, if I arrange these as a um, deter as a determinant I'd have negative two negative one two one 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 and four three one and that determinant um, is equal to minus one it has to be because it's the same as this when k is equal to two so Okay, um, so um, so that shows us because um, the negative here, uh, sorry, because the determinant here is negative one, it's not zero, so it's not singular. Um, therefore, our um, vectors here must be linearly independent of each other. So therefore, linearly. Okay, and there you go. It's as simple as that. Right, part C. Um, we need to state with a reason whether these equations here are consistent or inconsistent. Well, again, if I was going to write this in matrix form, um, that would be negative 2, negative 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 6, 4, 1. Okay, and what you might have already spotted is that, um, well, when k is equal, this, this is equal to this, when k is equal to 3. Okay, so that would be 2, 6 and 4, 6 and 4 here, yes, yeah, so, um, so this is the same as this when k is equal to 3, so I'm just going to write it. When k is equal to 3, it's equal to this here. Um, so our determinant here is negative 1, um, which means that um, our equations must be, cons there must be a unique solution um, that we can find. So they must be consistent um, with each other. So therefore, um, so, so the determinant is equal to negative 1, therefore um, equations are consistent. Remember they're only inconsistent um, when the determinant is zero 
and that when we find that there aren't any solutions um, av uh, available to us um, it's consistent when the solution exists so if there's either a, a unique solution or lots of solutions that exist then the equations are consistent but in this case we know that there's one unique solution that must exist therefore they're consistent um, for C part 2 it says that the um, uh, three equations um, are the Cartesian equations of three planes and we need to say what the geometrical configuration of these three planes are well because there's a unique solution that means that the three planes um, they must intersect each other in a single place so they must intersect at a single point okay so the planes must intersect at a point and there you go um, hopefully that was clear and um, I look forward to seeing you again next time